Hello Rutbags, it's Jade. Welcome to the Survival Show. We have got so much going on this week. The good, the bad, the new, it's all happening. Let's go. It's the Survival Show. Timestamps are down below. Go ahead and zoom to whatever info you really want. On today's show, we're going to be taking a look at New World coming out tomorrow for the first time for everyone to play if you signed up for the beta. Originally, the game was meant to release this month, but they decided to delay it for a second, maybe even a third time until next year. Instead, they're offering the chance for players who have pre-ordered to play the game for a good few days, get a feel for it, and obviously give them some much needed feedback ahead of its full launch, hopefully next March. There's big updates this week for some of the biggest and best survival games. Art Survival Evolved console is finally getting the Crystal Isles map. Six weeks after PC launch, Console fans will finally be able to go across one of the most favorited maps in the Steam community. On top of that, Grounded, which obviously has been blowing up lately, and you guys have been absolutely enjoying it, so thank you for all the support as ever, has got its big first update this week. Not to mention a whole host of brand new games also coming out this week, including Windbound, and we may see some news about Drake Hollow very soon. And from the good to the bad, Dead Matter has had significant problems trying to get its alpha up and running. I was trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, but it does seem they've handled things incredibly bad. Can they turn it around? Well, it looks like they're pretty sorry about the situation, and I'm going to give you the details and lowdown on what's going on with that. Also going to be talking about Conan Exiles, what the crud is going on with this game, and why have they kind of abandoned constant communication. Also on the show, Medieval Dynasty, I've got a release date for you guys, and we're taking a look at another zombie defense game, yes I know, but this one really might have a bit of a difference, and Rogue Legacy 2, maybe not a survival game, but I quite like it. Let's go! Windbound is coming out on the 28th of August, pretty much on Friday on Xbox, PlayStation, PC and Nintendo Switch. I've been playing it ahead of a release and it's pretty decent. I can't say too much more, you will see a bunch of content on release date though as I've recorded free Let's Plays already and they'll be going live if you're a YouTube member or patron, you'll get access to that on day one. Imagine a Zelda Wind Waker game, adding some proper survival elements in a procedurally generated landscape and you kind of get what Windbound is. Single player and it is going to be a full game, it's not any early access nonsense. So I'm really looking forward to this one, expect lots of gameplay over the weekend and the beginning of next week for this. Running around, taking on enemies, discovering artifacts and braving the cold and harsh seas at times. If you're wondering where the pre-order is, like a lot of digital games, they don't always show up, especially for indie ones like these. And everyone at pre-orders does get access to some bonus items. Although some platforms may have to wait a few days before they can actually get hold of them. I do believe the Switch, you're going to have to wait a couple of days for it to appear. So yeah, take a look at this when it comes out and go and check out some of our preview videos we've already done. Drake Hollow is still teasing us about a possible release date soon. DMF Forrest, the creative director of the studio, has been teasing in Discord. And once again, he mentions that they've got an announcement in just over a week. So that's pretty much going to be on the 28th. So I'm fully expecting to see a proper release date very, very soon for Drake Hollow. Drake Hollow, again, is another game I've been playing a lot of as I've got early access to it, and I can still show you a bunch of content all the way up until Act 1. So you may see some more gameplay before the release date announcement, and for sure, as soon as it is announced, I'm hopefully going to be delivering you even more content. It's procedurally generated in ways, it has seasons, different biomes that you explore, trying to gather resources to feed your drakes and build up your camp level. A big cross in my opinion, even though it hasn't got the gory graphics, a 7 days to die with the horde mode as you protect your base from the Aether and Fortnite and save the world, the now pretty much abandoned zombie defense game. For sure I like this one a lot, I've got an interview with the creative director, it will be live the minute that they announce a release date for the game. Drakes are cute, but don't let that fool you if you're a bit more of a hardcore survival fan, this game is pretty tough. Once you start venturing out to some of the other islands and areas, you'll definitely be coming across much harder enemies, and the grind for resources is real. So for sure, I highly recommend this already. Reportedly, it's also going to be on the Xbox Games Pass, and it's available on PC. No PS4 release for this one, but it still may come in the future. Our Survival Evolved is finally getting the Crystal Isles map. This is one of the earliest maps in development from a modding perspective, and it finally got added in as official and released for six weeks ago on PC. It's finally hitting Xbox and PlayStation on the 25th. 
to pretty much Tuesday tomorrow. Now, normally these types of releases will be happening in the evening time in the UK. So around, I would say 5 or 6 p.m. And that's between sort of 10 and 1 p.m. in America. A whole brand new free map to explore for console arc fans. Brand new creatures like the Crystal Wyvern. Kaya on Fire has pretty much handled most of the content for this for me. I am thinking about doing a let's play, but that won't be starting until maybe next week. But she's got all the tips to remind you of what to expect. So go and check out her 10 things you need to know. And if you remember, you can go and watch these videos right now on Discord. The links have all been posted. So if you want to get the lowdown on the Tropio and a reminder, or which Crystal Wyvern is the best, or even what base locations, even more that you might need to find, go and check out all these videos now. A big shout out to Kaya. She's worked super, super hard, and she's got even more art content on the way. She's going to be taking a look at the TLC content in the next week or so, and a bunch more Crystal Isles content too. Quite frankly, as I've said it before, at the moment with so much going on with Grounded and all the other games, I just would not be making that type of art content. So big shout out to Kaya for helping people out and get some of these guides specifically for you. Kaya on Fire has also worked on a opinion video talking about Conan Exiles on console and the problems it faces. Conan Exiles had an update for Xbox recently, but it hasn't appeared on a PlayStation yet. And it's the first update we've had in a good few weeks or so. But little to no communication is happening with the Funcom devs at the moment. I hate to say it, but since they've been bought out, they seem to have took their foot off the gas. We were getting quarterly updates with big content and pay DLC for people that really wanted it. Constant communication with live streams every other week or so. But since the start of the year, even before the COVID situation, they've been quieter and quieter. Apart from sharing a bunch of stuff to do with the community section, there just really isn't much going on and the game feels pretty dead. They've only released one paid DLC in the last eight months and they've only really had two little updates since the mounts update in December last year. They consider themselves a live service game. Well, that's a pretty bad live service. Now, you guys know I'm playing the new content that's coming in soon, hopefully. And there's no been official announcement of it, though. It is a brand new map. We knew this already. Developers have confirmed it. I can't say any more than that. I can only tell you I am playing it. But there's still no official release date for it. There's still no news, info, previews, nothing. And it's been quite a while. This latest update on Xbox also pretty much only re-adds a bunch of stuff and fixes things. There's no real big new content here. And this content went out on PC nearly two months ago. I assumed it would be hitting Xbox and PS4 at the same time, as they seem to have an update bang on the same day. But it turns out that adding stuff like gods, which have been missing for 10 months, they weren't added to the console versions. In fact, overall, it's been a year since avatars were enabled on console official servers. That's a crazy amount of time for a core component of your game. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. Go and check out Kaya's video. She's going to give you more of the rundown, the details on it. And we both hope that Funcom really, really fix up. We know game developers have had it hard with the COVID, but they've also had it fantastically well. Game sales are going through the roof for the majority of successful games. And there's no doubt about it, Funcom, I'm sure, have benefited greatly in the last few months. And that far outweighs any issues or problems with having to work from home. Even before the issue with COVID-19, they seem to be slowing down quite a bit. It looks like their attention is being focused on the game June, which is meant to be coming out at some point, maybe next year, beginning of 2022. But there you go. Go and check out Kai's video for more. While we're talking about problems with game communication, Dead Matter have not had a great weekend. This brand new zombie survival experience, think DayZ without all the jankiness, we're hoping, and a little bit more believable, if that's such a thing having zombies in your world, than maybe something like Scum. Dead Matter has been in development for three years and was indie crowd funded. But there's been big problems getting the alpha keys out to backers. It's coming up to a week since they started and tried to get their alpha keys out and they ran into some big problems. It seems that Steam didn't get the notification they would need so many. And there was a sudden influx of people desperate to try this game out who went and backed it maybe the day or a couple days before. This led to an oversurge in the keys actually being needed. Steam pretty much allows you to have free beta Steam key testing. So you can pretty much hand out as many beta keys as you want to people, but there is obviously a process in procuring them and making sure you've got enough, and also a sign that you are gonna be obviously selling the game on Steam. 
They, on top of that, they also had issues with Cloudflare and their website, pretty much thinking that everyone was DDoSing them. And there were some instances of DDoSing too. I'm not here just to defend dead matter. They definitely have made some mistakes in terms of not talking to people a bit more constantly. Even if it's just repeating the same news, it would have been better than going silent for long stretches. But it's understandable that they had so much more interest in the game. People were crying out for a proper zombie world, open world experience that isn't Daisy or Scum. This kind of stuff happens all the time with AAA releases. Think of the issues that have happened with GTA and Destiny back in the day. It took days to sort out access to some of them sometimes. And that's from big AAA publishers, not some small indie team made out of about 10 people. So I kind of feel sorry for them for a little bit, but for sure, as I said, they could have communicated probably a bit better. They've also caught a lot of flack for locking off their Discord and some of their forum sites so no one can really comment or post anything. Again, this is probably a big mistake. Regardless of the nonsense that's being said, that's why you have lots and lots of moderators, hopefully. And they should have maybe planned that out a little bit better. But for sure, there's been a lot of toxicity. I've seen it online on Reddit, and I've seen a lot of other YouTubers jump in the hate bandwagon. Honestly, as an alpha from a first time dev, this shit is gonna go down. The important thing is the devs are trying to fix it and correct it, and they are getting the keys out to everyone. But there was some more bad news yesterday. So anyone that has backed it up until a certain point, they will receive a key but it may take a few days as they work on other ways to get the keys out. You will get a key, but it's gonna take maybe a little bit longer and they've just had their first big wave go out in the early hours of the morning. For people trying to gain access to the alpha now, you might not gain access right now. You might have to wait until the next alpha. The devs are offering refunds to anyone that has done it. The devs are offering refunds to anyone that feels unhappy. But pretty much if you try back in the game in the last couple of days, the chances are you're not going to get a key. Only the people that have backed the game previously will receive a key. I'm sure they'll extend the alpha time. I don't even remember how long they were going to say it was going to be up. I have got a key myself. I've yet to jump into it. And there is a bit of an embargo on what content creators can be talking about. But if I do get a time, I will try and sort out some sort of video or content for you guys to see the gameplay from my perspective. So yeah, not a great thing for them. But again, I think it's completely understandable. If AAAs can get this cocked up on a regular, I can't see why people can't give an indie small team a break. So a game that might not have so many problems as it's been running betas and alphas for quite a while now is New World. As I said at the start of the show, it's been delayed until next year, the full release. But it is going to be available for the majority of people that pre-ordered the game. You'll be able to try it out in the next few days. The preview is going to begin though on Tuesday at 9am PT time, so 12pm Eastern, and it's going to be running until September the 4th. So we'll probably actually live stream that tomorrow night. That might be a good chance for me to dive into New World. I have played a little bit of it in the past as I have had closed alpha access for a while, and they even invited me to LA a couple years ago to really see the early development of it. It's definitely changed since then, a lot's been added, but for sure it was the right call delaying it to add some more content. But yeah, I'm definitely excited about jumping into a tournament. If you like Conan Exiles and MMOs like ESO, I think you're really going to enjoy this game. So a quick preview of some new games coming in. This is very, very indie, very, very small. Night of the Dead is a defense tower game against zombies. Pretty much waves of zombies will spawn every night and it's up to you to build and make yourself some defenses and traps. This seems like there's quite a lot of world to explore. And you can go and hunt wildlife and do all sorts of the usual shenanigans. Pick up loot and change your clothing. And also obviously run away from hundreds of zombies. But it's the traps that look really interesting too. Once you've gathered and harvested enough resources, they look pretty insane. Just take a look at some of this action getting absolutely mangled. I love the idea of this being a lot more maybe arcadey than some of the other survival games you've seen. We've even got trebuchets involved flamethrowers and here you can see what kind of setup you might need to try and defend yourself all in all it looks a bit bonkers a little bit mad i quite like the fact it's a little bit different from all the rest so for sure i'm going to be trying this out on the 28th or a couple of days after now not really a survival game but the first version of this rogue legacy was a great little game i used to play on my vita the sequel is out now in early access and it looks to have updated the art style. Added a whole host of new options, new enemies and new maps. It's all procedurally generated. It is a roguelike. When you die, that's it. You're dead. 
you may be able to take maybe a few perks or buffs that you've acquired through your run to the next play. So for sure, I'm going to give this a try. You may see me live streaming it very soon. Medieval Dynasty, a game I've been kind of looking forward to for a while now, is coming out on the 17th of September. This has been confirmed on the Discord. Think Kingdom Come Deliverance, but more survival based and a lot less story content. You are going to be in charge of your settlement as a lone male surviving during the Middle Ages. The twist is that you're able to have kids and pass your knowledge on to your generations and keep growing your settlement throughout all different seasons. When I showed off the trailer video or devlog video for this a good few months ago, you were super excited. That video got like 20,000 views in the space of a few days. So I'm expecting this to be pretty big. There are some criticisms I've already said though. They're apparently not allowing women to be the main character, which I find pretty absurd as there are lots of reports of women being the main breadwinner. Yes, even in the Middle Ages. But either way, I'm looking forward to this one. I will be covering it massively. And fingers crossed it will be appearing on console in the future as they've already got some experience bringing their farming dynasty game to consoles. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see this on consoles in the future. I'm going to work my best to get some code early so I'll give you guys lots of tips and guides and some gameplay ahead of its release. And of course, Grounded has its first a big update. They brought forward the release date from the 27th to the 26th and it's going to be adding a whole host of brand new content. We're all hoping it will be the water update as well as some new decorative items like the fence post there and a bunch of other stuff too like changes to the landscape. Be prepared, you may find that parts of areas have been demolished and your base might not function how it used to. But given I've shown you guys a lot of the water content incoming, Unless you've built your base right over the water, you should just about be okay. As I said, I'm still not 100% sure this update will add that water section, but you guys all seem pretty convinced it's going to be happening. So fingers crossed it does, I'll be there every step of the way, showcasing all the new stuff that you need to know, showing you how to properly get all the resources. It's fair to say the players playing Grounded on Steam have gone down quite significantly. From a peak of 16,000, they're averaging around 4,000 right now. But for sure, on Xbox, I know you guys are enjoying it massively. We're going to carry on seeing a lot more content from me on Grounded. But just bear in mind, I have got a lot of other content coming next week, including that Windbound, Drake Hollow hopefully soon, and lots of other exciting stuff in the pipeline. There's no word yet on exactly when the update's going to go live on Wednesday. But I'm figuring since they are in America, we don't expect the update to hit until the evening time in the UK. And I'll be here, I'll be streaming at some point during that day, hyping up you guys and where you can maybe join me. And there we go guys, that is the survival show. Pretty much might be the only one we have this week. Hopefully you guys now got a clue about what's going on with all the new releases and updates happening. As ever, for the best in survival game content, make sure you subscribe, make sure you've got notifications turned on. And I'll see you rat bags later.